Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dax Anti-Patterns. Danielle, thank you for joining me again for this. I'm excited to dig into some uh, new little patterns and figuring out uh, some enhancements and improvements that you have related to various Dax functions. Yeah, hi everyone. Let's yeah, just uh, get right to it. Absolutely, let's dive into it. So, just one example today. I'm going to show you the bad version and I'm going to zoom in a bit. Yep. So the formula is fairly simple. Now, to explain what it's trying to do, like I know what the author wanted to do. And here, this measure is supposed to show the last available date across the whole data set. Mm -hmm. Now, you see this, uh, this uh, calculate and max, so it's uh, fairly, I guess, simple, right? Read, have you got any issues with the formula so far? Well, you're calculating, but not applying a filter. So at the moment, the calculate seems uh, unnecessary just because you don't use that unless you are modifying the filter context in some way. So I would imagine you just simply max of the sales order date key would return the same value. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you're exactly right. Calculate is unnecessary here because it's a measure and there is no filter. So calculate is not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, I don't know about you. I've seen this many times, like across different <laughs> clients, uh, yeah. across many years. I see this all over, like all the time. So mm -hmm. every time I find this, I ask the person next to me, why is this written this way? And usually the answer that I get is, Oh, I don't know. It wasn't me. It was someone else. And so I can never catch the person who is actually doing this. Uh, maybe I do often get an answer, though, the... uh, I will say is just the, the, the person will typically come out and say, oh, well, I want to calculate this. Like, so they think of it as a compute function. Like, <laughs> it, won't, it won't run unless it's, like a, it's almost an evaluate for people who use Dex Studio. Like, they think it needs to be there to calculate the thing. Like, well, no, it, it automatically will do a max of. You don't have to. You don't, you don't have to say compute in front of it. Um, so I, I do think people sometimes misunderstand the need for a calculate. It's like using filter. Uh, like the, the very first year, like a decade ago that I was using DAX uh, back in Power Pivot, um, I used to use calculate, filter, and then apply a filter every single time because I thought the only way to apply a filter in calculate was the filter function because, you know, the name says filter. Then I realized, oh, no, no, that's yeah. only, you know, advanced filtering. Basic filtering does not require it. So I, I think that's one of those uh, pitfalls that, that early DAX users potentially see with calculators. They just sprinkle it everywhere because it, it's needed for like any type of calculation. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good one. I haven't heard this uh, explanation before. So one other explanation that I sometimes hear is that there used to be filters, but then we removed them and the calculate state. That's, yep. uh, mm -hmm. I guess more or less acceptable, except you should still try to clean up your code so there is uh, no rubbish, <laughs> yeah. right? Agreed. And that one time I was uh, doing a technical interview and uh, the guy, he wrote a measure exactly like this, calculate, and then it was some, it doesn't matter. There were no filters in this measure. So I thought, okay, finally, I caught someone red-handed. So this guy, wrote calculate like this with no filters in a measure so i decided to ask him so why did you write it like this and then he said oh, that's because without a calculate it would be over the whole table whereas with calculate it's taking into account filter context and i am pretty sure that i know what reed is thinking and reed is probably thinking that the guy confused measures and columns and that's exactly right because yeah in columns mm, go ahead uh, yeah, I was just going to say, in columns, calculate without filters does serve a purpose. Yes, exactly. It's like whether or not you wanted to return the total versus the, you know, whatever like value you're trying to retrieve from a row. And like there are times where you do need to calculate a min, max, sum, et cetera, without an additional filter context because you need to do the context transition. But that is only in calculated columns if that is required or, uh, when you're adding them there. Yeah. So uh, maybe uh, to illustrate this concept uh, just a bit uh, in case uh, you're not comfortable with uh, context transition from row context to uh, filter context, let me show you a small example. I'm just going to do a home, enter data, and we'll do a very, very small table. So it's going to be, a, let's say, letter number 
Okay, so A, B, C, and then it's one, two, three. Okay, so there's gonna be just three rows, like I said, and two columns. Very, very simple. Now, we'll go here to this table and we'll add a column. And the column is gonna be just uh, some number and it's gonna be sum of a number like this, okay? So once we uh, enter this, we get six for all the rows. And mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of expected uh, because there is uh, no context transition. Sum is using filter context. For each row, there is no filter context. Therefore, it's the sum across uh, the whole table. So it makes sense. Now, if we add calculate here, uh, the IntelliSense just doesn't want to play along. Yeah, so, so I, I, that's not you. It honestly is, as you, you're, as many of the other MVPs as well are aware, since they've updated a lot of the stuff in the last six months, it, the IntelliSense is, has not been working as well as it used to. So they will fix yeah, a lot of the bugs that have been reported, but it, at the moment, it, if you've already started with a function, added a new function at the beginning, it basically just looks like it's broken <laughs> until you type it out completely. So like that, that's a known bug that hopefully sometime soon we'll finally get patched. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, select this uh, check mark, which I think used to be called commit, like when you hovered over it, mm -hmm. no longer. Anyway, it's a check mark, I guess. So now calculate, even though it has no filters, because it's a calculated column, it serves the purpose of the context transition. So we're going from row context to filter context. And in case uh, you're not entirely comfortable with this concept, just to explain what's going on. So previously, we did sum over the whole table. Now calculate mm -hmm. is doing context transition, meaning for each row, it takes the values of each column and then applies those as filters. So for the first row, it's gonna be calculate sum of uh, the number column where letter is A and number is one. So that's why I chose this simple table because it's just two columns, so it's easy to explain. Yep. Now, for the second row, it's calculate the sum of the number column where mm -hmm. the letter is B and number is uh, two. So because there is just uh, one row, we get two just like in the number column. So it doesn't look uh, very exciting. Now, let's change things a bit and go to this query, the table query. And we will change it so that it's uh, no longer unique. So it's going to be B and two. Okay, and select close and apply. Now we'll get something surprising if you're new to concept transition. See, we get one, four, and four. So that's because the first row is still unique. There is only one row where letter is A and number is one. If we go to row two, we are instructing Power BI to give us the sum of the number column where letter is B and number is two. And because there are two such rows, we get four for both rows. So yep. it's uh, no longer the same as the number column. Now, I tell you what, I had an issue a while back where I did something like sum for column, like a simple sum. And I also did a sum x over a table where the second parameter was a measure. And the measure was a simple sum. So I thought they should return the same result, right? Um, because I'm just doing row by row, sum function, right? Well, no. In my case, they didn't return the same result because I had some duplicate rows. And uh, yep. while sometimes the rows might be duplicate for a bad reason, sometimes there are some legitimate duplicate rows. And in those cases, you might get different results. So just like here, we get sum one, four, and four, which might not be what you expect. You might also get those in measures. And just like we mentioned uh, in uh, one of the previous episodes, it's those measures that are tricky. They're, they're dangerous when they sometimes return the right results and sometimes it's, it's not right. And they're but, very uh, it, 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 it fails successfully as, as you can call it. <laughs> like, yeah, so like you, you don't actually know unless you were scrubbing through your data. But I do think and even again, like the first time that I learned about like using calculate in this, it was described to me as essentially, oh yeah, all it does is it looks at the table and it just returns the value for every row. Like that's, that's a half truth. That, that's the goal of what it is. 
But as you're showing, like technically, it isn't just look. It isn't just saying sum for row one, sum for row two. It looks at every unique, every column, and every identifier in that column, and then basically applies a filter of letter equals a, number equals two. So in this case, if you don't have an index column or some third category that makes that row unique, then you sum those up. So, um, and I mean, at least for me, like That's you know, right. the two avenues is you either need an index column, which can be expensive in terms of size. Or you maybe add that column in Power Query if that's something where you're going to have an issue with loading the table to add additional columns to make the rows unique to, in order to correctly calculate a calculated column. Yeah, readers, right? As always, I just wanted to add, when Reed said an index column can be expensive, uh, what um, I think Reed meant is if you have fact tables and you have index columns in those, mm -hmm. then it means for each row of the fact table, there's going to be a unique value. Mm -hmm. And because fact tables are usually large, sometimes they have millions and even like tens and hundreds of millions of rows, yep. you will get lots of distinct counts. I mean, lot, lots of uh, distinct values in those index columns because index columns are supposed to be this way. And they are just going to occupy a lot of space. So to give you an example, I was working on a data model in analysis services, it was not even Power BI. In analysis services, the data model size was um, 3.5 gigs, I think. And uh, there were many tables. Uh, now, in one of them, there was a composite column uh, that was like an amalgamation or <laughs> however it's uh, called uh, of other columns. It was a fact table and the purpose of the column was to create some kind of an index. So it wasn't even an mm -hmm. integer, it was text, and it was fairly long. Now, I knew that column wasn't used anywhere, because by the way, in most cases, index columns in fact are useless. Like, what are you going to do with them? Do this in count? It's much cheaper and more you know, efficient to do a count row operation yep. in case you want to do counts over a fact table. Now, I killed that column, and the size went down to 1.6 gigs and also the processing time decreased by like 15 percent mm -hmm. now you might be like okay so what's the big deal here well the big deal is that sometimes um, the size not only affects performance but also money for example yeah. you've got p1 p2 p3 you know sqs in power bi premium in case uh, you can get your model smaller you can pay less so everybody can understand money. Maybe some manager will not understand the performance, but surely they can understand that they can save money. So you should strive to be as efficient as possible whenever you can. Exactly. Now, going back to our original problem, the other problem with this measure is that it actually doesn't work the way it's intended to work. So it only works when there is no filters because it's not going to return the last available order date key. It will take into account wh whichever filter is applied. So for example, if I select the fiscal year to be, say, 2018, then as you can see, the mm -hmm. value has changed and, and so on. So it actually didn't work, <laughs> this measure, the way it was supposed to work. Now, Reid, how would you fix it? So what I'm hearing is that you want that to return not the filtered uh, latest date or max date, you want it to return the all-time max date, ignoring any other filters, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, then you would re uh, I would replace, uh, or you, you could add a filter into there um, of all uh, using, using that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah. that, that's the most straightforward one. It's just you know adding a comma between the last two parentheses and just all on the order date key. Um, there's actually, Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't though, depending on the visual, because even though you might only be displaying like one date column, let's say on a visual, and you need this calculation to ignore that, and then you apply that all mm -hmm. filter, and it still doesn't actually ignore that because technically the query might actually be retrieving other values from the calendar table sometime or other columns. Uh, I'll see if I can link it yeah. and po post it into the description, but there are times where you actually have to apply the all statement to the dimension table of the calendar, which is more expensive. Sometimes, depending on just how your model is set up, you can apply it directly on the column, which will be faster because it's it's less data to query. Um, you know, so it is usually recommended when possible. You want to apply an all filter on the column versus the table uh, when applicable. 
Mm, okay. And uh, just to um, add to this, if you want to be really safe or <laughs> if that's uh, what you want according to your business requirements, if yep. you want to return the latest order date key uh, regardless of any filters, you can just use all or like remove filters uh, with uh, no parameters at all like this. So then, oh, okay. I've, let, I've done remove filters with the filter inside, like additional logic inside of it. I've not actually used it just by itself. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it also works with all because this chain I knew that was one. made before. Yeah, 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 yeah. But remove filters is, uh, it's, it's like all, except all can be used as a table and also as a calculate modifier, whereas remove filters can only be used as a calculate modifier. So this way, whichever filter you apply, it will not affect the maximum sales order uh, date key. So mm -hmm. in some cases, that's uh, pretty useful. OK, no, like I, so I learned something uh, new on this one. I like that. <laughs> OK, <laughs> OK, good. Um, OK, uh, that's, uh, that's it for, t for today. Awesome. No, I, I appreciate this. And I, I, I just as a little bit of some further information as well, the remove filters is something that came out well, it seems new to me, Lockyer. but granted, I've been in this for like 10 years. It's like three, four years ago is when Remove Filters uh, was released? No. Pretty sure it was within maybe the last year, maybe two years. See, okay. Because yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I saw like Gil Reviver, a few that, that blogged about it, but um, it, it was a nice more recent addition because the, uh, the, the old school uh, way that I remember Power BI doing a lot of like uh, filter applications is there, there are some types of uh, ways to use calculate where it would secretly apply an all function and then a filter, which could cause some visuals to look weird, where it would display all rows um, regardless of it without actually, mm -hmm. you know, you would have the grand total on every single row um, versus yeah. using remove filters only displays it on the row with the, like if you applied an additional filter on top of it. So it, it does make certain visuals depending on the shape and, and size the, to render appropriately and not look like you're repeating your data uh, just because of how... Mm. DAX had to be built from like the old school power pivot days. So like th this was kind of like an updated version of using all that is a, vi a bit cleaner visually um, when you actually display it in uh, often matrices or tables in Power BI. Yeah, and uh, in addition to this, remove filters just reads better because in my <laughs> mind, it's yeah. easier to understand what it does as opposed to all. All what? Yeah, yeah, it's it's fair. It, it's syntax sugar, as uh, the the Italians like to call it. Perfect. This was really good. Um, I appreciate. I I learned something new, which honestly, like, is a is an added bonus for me. And then for everyone tuning in, hopefully, this was a fun conversation about both calculate, a little sprinkle of real co uh, context transition in there, and then also uh, good ways to cleanly um, remove filters using the remove filter function. So thanks for sharing this, Daniel. Thanks. All right. Cheers. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.